Meet McHale's Navy, a classic 1962 TV series that takes you on a comedic naval escapade. Starring a notable Hollywood actor, the show unfolds with a mix of humor, shock, and a touch of sadness. Wondering who your favorite classic Hollywood actor in the series is? As you dive into the episodes, be prepared for funny, shocking, and even heart-wrenching moments that might leave a lasting impact on you. Have you ever experienced a scene or moment from McHale's Navy that stuck with you? We're eager to hear your most cherished memories or personal experiences related to the show. Share your stories and thoughts in the comments below. There's more to discover, so keep watching for the many surprises ahead. What classic Hollywood actor in this TV series was your favorite? Is there a particular scene or moment that has had a lasting impact on you? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. A recent reflection on the 1962 television series McHale's Navy brings to light the enduring appeal of this classic show. The ensemble cast, featuring notable actors like Ernest Borgnine, delivered performances that stand out in the history of TV. The reviewer expresses a desire for the show's resurgence on current programming platforms, emphasizing its significance as a comedic gem from TV's golden era. While acknowledging Borgnine's contribution to the series, the reviewer points out that the real stars, in their opinion, were Joe Flynn as Captain Binghampton and Tim Conway as Ensign Parker. Binghampton's continuous attempts to thwart McHale and his crew, coupled with his comical schemes backfiring, are highlighted for their humor. Conway's portrayal of the eager yet hapless Ensign Parker is commended for its comedic brilliance, particularly in moments of responsibility and encounters with Claudine Longett. Bob Hastings, playing the loyal Lieutenant Carpenter, is recognized for his role as Binghamton's long-suffering underling. The character's unwavering dedication, despite being the scapegoat for Binghamton's missteps, adds depth to the comedic dynamics. Carl Ballantine's Gruber, always on the lookout for dubious opportunities, is also mentioned as a source of enjoyment. The reviewer notes a slight decline in the show's energy when its location shifted from the South Pacific to Italy. They express mixed feelings about some supporting cast members, highlighting Gavin McLeod's character Happy as a less favorable addition. Despite these considerations, the overall sentiment is positive, emphasizing the show's humor and the chemistry between Flynn and Conway. In conclusion, the review reflects on McHale's Navy as a very funny and enjoyable show, showcasing the talents of its ensemble cast and the comedic interplay between key characters. It stands as a testament to the era's great writing, acting, and the magic chemistry that occasionally graces television. This neutral perspective aims to provide insight into the show's appeal for those unfamiliar with McHale's Navy, urging a new generation to discover its comedic charm. The PT-73 featured in the 1962 TV series had an intriguing backstory. Originally a 72-foot Type II Vosper MTB built for export to the Soviet Union, it ended up in the hands of billionaire Howard Hughes. Following its role as a chase boat for Hughes's Spruce Goose aircraft, Universal Pictures acquired it for McHale's Navy. Liberties were taken to transform it into a PT boat, including the addition of machine gun turrets not present in the original Vosper design. Interestingly, the shots of the crew on the PT-73 were filmed on a soundstage using a full-scale mock-up, highlighting the production's creative approach. The boat's journey didn't end with the show, it was later repurposed as a sport fishing boat, meeting its demise during a storm near Santa Barbara. Ernest Borgnine, who played a prominent role in the series, revealed in an interview that the PT boat used was owned by Howard Hughes. This boat had a previous role as the photographic chase boat during the legendary Soul Flight of the Spruce Goose. A subtle connection to another TV series, Adam One Hollywood Division, emerged when the Voltafir set from McHale's Navy's final season and the actual PT-73 were spotted in different scenes. It's a testament to the enduring presence of iconic props in the world of television. In summary, McHale's Navy's PT-73 had a remarkable history, starting as a Vosper MTB, passing through Howard Hughes's ownership and finding its place in the entertainment industry. The show's unique approach to production, coupled with the boat's real-world journey, adds a layer of intrigue to the series. Lieutenant CMDR Quentin McHale, known as Skipper by his men, had a unique way of addressing them as eight balls or schlockmeisters. This dynamic set the tone for the series, showcasing the skipper's informal leadership style. 
Captain Wallace B. Binghampton, previously in charge of a Long Island Sound Yacht Club or editing a yachting magazine, faced constant financial demands from the crooked mayor of Voltafiore, Mario Lugato, skillfully portrayed by Jay Novello. The mayor's persistent attempts to extract money from Binghampton added a comedic twist to the series. Notably, Binghampton's diverse pre-war occupations, from running a yacht club to editing a yachting magazine, added depth to his character. The show also humorously captured his association with a San Diego yacht club, as seen on his sweatshirt in one episode. The interactions between McHale, his men, and the persistent challenges from Mayor Lugato contributed to the humor and charm of the series. This straightforward and character-driven approach, coupled with the show's situational humor, made it a memorable part of television history. In summary, McHale's Navy, with its focus on Skipper McHale, Captain Binghampton, and the shenanigans in Volta Fiore, delivered a unique blend of humor and character dynamics, creating an enduring presence in the world of television. In its fourth season, McHale's Navy introduced a twist by having Ernest Borgnine take on a dual role. Borgnine skillfully portrayed both the familiar Skipper McHale and McHale's cousin Giuseppe in two episodes Giuseppe McHale and The Return of Giuseppe. Similarly, Joe Flynn added to the show's dynamics by playing a double role in alias Captain Binghampton, taking on the characters of Captain Binghampton and Seaman Smoot. Notably, Tim Conway in later years spoke highly of his working relationship with Borgnine both on and off the set, emphasizing their excellent rapport during the show's production. Originally conceptualized as a straightforward military action series, McHale's Navy showcased a unique blend of humor and character dynamics deviating from the conventional military-themed narratives. This departure added a distinctive flavor to the show, setting it apart in the television landscape. These behind-the-scenes insights provide a glimpse into the camaraderie among the cast members and the show's evolution from its initial military concept to its humor-driven approach. The dual roles played by Borgnine and Flynn contributed to the show's versatility, enhancing the overall viewing experience for audiences. In Mikhail's Navy, the character Fuji Kobayashi had a distinctive catchphrase oi vey, whenever trouble loomed. It's a Yiddish expression meaning oh whoa, Lieutenant CMDR. Quinton McHale even echoed Fuji's words in one episode, emphasizing the crew's familiarity with the exclamation. Another interesting tidbit involves the character Tinker Bell, whose real first name was Harrison. Ernest Borgnine, who played a pivotal role in the series, initially turned down the offer to star in the pilot. However, a chance encounter with a boy selling candy who recognized other TV stars, but not Borgnine, prompted him to reconsider. Borgnine eventually accepted the role, becoming a crucial part of what would later become his signature television series. These behind-the-scenes anecdotes add a layer of uniqueness to McHale's Navy, showcasing the quirky dynamics both on and off-screen. The series, known for its humor and character-driven approach, carved a distinct niche in television history. It's a testament to the show's appeal that even its catchphrases and character details continue to resonate with audiences. In McHale's Navy, the series broke conventions by featuring Lieutenant CMDR. Quinton McHale as a PT boat captain with a staff rank, a departure from the usual lieutenant or lieutenant rank held by PT boat captains. The show provided a unique perspective on military hierarchy, showcasing McHale's atypical position. During engagements with Japanese submarines, McHale's crew displayed a consistent pattern. When attacking, the targeted submarine either exploded on the surface upon torpedo impact or surfaced and exploded when hit by a depth charge. This recurring scenario added a distinctive element to the show's action sequences, emphasizing the crew's efficiency in dealing with enemy submarines. Hence, Charles Parker, a notable character in the series, frequently mentioned his mother but rarely discussed his father. This detail added a layer of mystery to Parker's background, highlighting the show's focus on character nuances. The selective disclosure of family details contributed to the character-driven nature of McHale's Navy. These aspects, drawn from credible sources, offer insights into McHale's Navy's unconventional portrayal of PT Boat Command, its consistent narrative approach during naval engagements, and the deliberate character development seen through ends. Charles Parker's Family References The series, known for its straightforward style, effectively blended military themes with character dynamics, leaving a lasting impact on television history.